Good to see you back again, and you might ask, why do I have a tape measure hung around my neck? Well, because we're talking about measurement. And you can see there's a tape measure on your screen, too. I also have some other tools that we'll be looking at momentarily, but for now, we'll just stick with the tape measure. So metric measurement is an important thing, and there's a song that you're going to be listening to. It's about meters and liters and grams. It goes something like meters and liters and grams. The metric system has meters and liters and grams. And I'll sing the rest of it for you in another video that has the song in it. But that's just a little intro to the metric measurement. Metric measurement, just like in the other things that you've been doing, metric measurement, you're going to put some information into your lab book. What do you put into your lab book? Well, you put in the information that it takes for you to learn about this topic. Put the topic and the date at the top of the page. Write down the different concepts as you learn them. Highlight the vocabulary, but you don't need to write the words and definitions because they're already in Quizlet. Just put a word or something that helps you to associate uh, something with that vocabulary definition as we go through. Then when we get to the end, we'll do these other parts that are here. So first of all, metric measurement. All measurements that we make need to have a number and a unit. Would you be impressed if I came in and I said, you know what, I walked four yesterday. You wouldn't? Oh, it meant for what, right? So if I said I went four kilometers, would you be impressed? How about four centimeters? Big difference, isn't there? So you need to be clear on exactly what number and what unit you're using when we're talking about metric units. Metric system is based on tens. So there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter. There's 10 centimeters in a decimeter. There's 10 decimeters in a meter. There's 10 meters in a decameter. There's 10 decameters in a hectometer. And then there's 10 hectometers in a kilometer. Are you confused yet? Well, it's all tens. Now, a couple things about numbers. Do you know the difference between this number, 3, and this number, 3.0? Well, 3.0 is very specific. It means exactly 3. So if I was using this ruler right here, and I said 3.0, that would be right exactly on that line of 3. It wouldn't even be slightly above it or below it. It would be exactly 3, because below it is 2.9, and above it is 3.1. And if we're being specific, we want to make sure we give exact measurements. If we just say 3, then it could be as high as 3.4 and as low as 2.6 because it might have been rounded a little bit. When we're using measurements in science class or most numbers, we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So we don't have to have big, long decimal numbers, but we do want to be as specific as we possibly can. So the first measurement has to do with length. And I see that I'm in the way of some of this. So I'm going to see if I can get myself out of the way. There we go. So length. I've already showed you my ruler and my tape measure. So I'm going to get rid of my tape measure now so it doesn't hurt me as I continue the video. So some of the common units, we use millimeters. And if you want to think of a millimeter, it's about the height of a dime. Centimeters is the width of your pinky finger from one side to the other. And a meter is about from the doorknob of a door to the floor. A door is usually about two meters tall. The doorknob is right in the middle. And then a kilometer is 1,000 meters. And if you think of it this way, it's a little bit, it's about one half of a mile is one kilometer. You can use tape measures, you can use rulers. Again, most of them are in centimeters, and then if you need to, you can convert those to other units. Probably one of the easiest measurements because you've been doing it for a while. Mass has to do with the amount of matter. So I guess you could say that mass matters, if that helps you. It's the amount of stuff that's in something. So the more mass you have, the more stuff you have. Um, but the age-old question, which one has more mass, one kilogram of lead or one kilogram of feathers? They both have the same mass. 
Now, they might be different sizes, but they both have the same mass, the same amount of stuff, one kilogram. A few of the common measurements for mass would be milligrams. And if you think of it, it's one fiftieth of a drop of water. So you'd have to break a drop of water into 50 drops to make one milligram. One gram is like a paper clip. And a water bottle, most of the water bottles that you would drink that would be approximately one uh, liter would be 1,000 grams. We sometimes use electric balances and sometimes we use these things called triple beam balances to measure things. You do need to know how to use a triple beam balance and so there's some practice on one of the assignments that you can do. But most of the time, if you're doing a project or an experiment, it's a lot easier to use an electronic balance because it will give you an accurate number and do it fairly quickly. So as we move on, we move on to volume, the amount of space. On this card, sometimes if when I was making vocab cards, I would draw like the moon or a star on here because it's talking about the amount of space because space has to do with volume. So this doesn't have to do with how much stuff is there, but how much take how much space it takes up. We use one of these, a graduated cylinder, to measure, and you can see that it's graduated. It has numbers on it at certain intervals, and that's why it's called a graduated cylinder. But we're talking about the amount of space something takes up, not the amount of stuff inside of it. So a few little things about volume. First of all, some of the common volume measurements. A milliliter is about 20 drops of water. A liter is a water bottle, kind of like what we talked about. Uh, a water bottle that you would drink out of is about 1,000 grams because one gram is the same thing as one milliliter. And then a kiloliter would be like a pool full of water. Now you can measure things that are not liquid. All you have to do is put liquid in here to a certain amount. Let's just say we put it up to 50. And after you put this up to 50, you drop your object carefully in, not to splash, because if you splash, you lose your measurement. And if it breaks the container, well, you lose your measurement too. So you're going to drop your object in and let it go down. And if it was at 50 and now it's at 60, you subtract 60 minus 50, and then you know that was 10 milliliters. So you can do objects that um, will fit in a graduated cylinder. And there are lots of different sizes of graduated cylinders to measure lots of different sizes of objects. The other way you can measure volume is with length times width times height. That's the mathematical measurement. That gives you something called a cubic centimeter. And just so you know, as you can see right here, one cubic centimeter is the same thing as one milliliter. So mass, volume, and length are the three main measurements that we have in the metric system. But wait, there's more. We also use temperature. You would use Fahrenheit if you were measuring here in the United States. In science and in most parts of the world, they use Celsius or centigrade. And again, it's based on tens, or in this case, 100. Zero is freezing, and 100 is boiling. If you want to know what room temperature is, it's right around 20. A lot of times, a little bit over. Usually, my room's about 22. Your body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. Those are just some of the common measurements in Celsius uh, that we use with a thermometer. Thermometer. Thermo means heat. And meter is like a unit of measurement. So we're talking about like measuring the heat, the length of the heat. Hmm. Interesting. That's what a thermometer does. The liquid in the thermometer rises as it gets warmer. So common measurements, units, and tools. Length, the unit is usually a meter, but it could be a centimeter or a millimeter or a kilometer. Use a ruler or a tape measure. Mass grams or kilograms, maybe milligrams if you're talking about medicine, and we use a balance. In some cases, an electric balance or a triple beam balance. Volume, we measure in liters, could use milliliters, 
We could even use centiliters or kiloliters, but those aren't used very much. And we use something called a graduated cylinder. These are important things to know and important things to understand. The difference between the measurements, math, volume, and length, the units, meters, liters, and grams, and the tools that we use to measure them. As you might have heard in this unit section, you can use prefixes to make things bigger or smaller, but it's still the same thing. It is still the metric units. So the last one we come to then is something called density. And I always say that I love density. And the reason I love density, if you look at that very carefully, what's on top and what's on the bottom? On the top, we have mass, an M. And on the bottom, we have volume, which is a V. So when you were in kindergarten, you learned about density. Your kindergarten teacher sat on a rocking chair or a chair in front of the class, and they had a big bucket of water. It was a clear bucket so you could see into it. And they picked an object, and they said, Now, boys and girls, do you think this is going to sink, or do you think it's going to float? And there were arguments and there was pushing because there was a lot of that kind of stuff in kindergarten because in kindergarten you think that if you can push the other person over that you're right. You don't still think that now, do you? Well, anyway, and there was arguments. And so finally the teacher said, okay, everybody quiet, let's try it. And everybody's eyes glued to the screen as the teacher set the object on top of the water. And the teacher chose a smart object for the first one because when the teacher set that object on top of the water, it kind of stayed on top for a second, and then it went glug, 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 to the bottom. And when it sat on top, those who thought it was going to float were like, whoa, it floated, and then it sunk to the bottom, and then there was more arguing because somebody said, oh, yeah, I said it was going to sink, and they said, no, you didn't because you thought, again, you remember how kindergarten was. It's just that way. So in order to find the density of something in seventh grade, we use a balance and a graduated cylinder. But the basic idea is, does that object sink or does it float? Does it have more mass or does it have more volume? Does it have more stuff or does it take up more space? Water has a density of one. So if you have something that has a density of one, it doesn't sink or float. It just hovers or is suspended in the liquid. So if you have 100 milliliters of water, you have 100 grams of water. If you have 300 milliliters of water, you have 300 grams of water. If you have 4,652,421 milliliters of water, okay, you get the picture, because I don't even remember what that number was myself, but you understand it's a one-to-one -one ratio, the same milliliters and the same grams. So now it's time to write some questions. Write a little test for yourself, a little quiz, three to five questions about measurement, asking questions about the metric units, about what type of tool would you use to measure this, about what type of unit would you use, what measurement is this, um, or other questions that are examples. At the bottom of your page, if you have any questions about measurement that I did not answer and you still need answered, write them down at the bottom or again. I'm confused about length. You can even write that. It's not a question, but it explains what it is you're confused about. If you understood everything about measurement, you write at the bottom of your page, I understood everything today. And that will show that you have a, an idea of what all these concepts are so that you don't have to really, you know, take much time to review them. You've got them. At this point, you should be able to fill in the measurement worksheet. And uh, good luck with that. We'll see you next time as we look at the next slide deck, which I believe is going to be classification.